Absolutely. I mean, this, this, is, this is a big lift. Uh, it's big enough that we're not going to get it done unless everyone helps. But the fact of the matter is, although my proposed budget does realign state spending with the revenues we expect we're going to have, that's going to diverge unless we make some fundamental changes in, in the whole enterprise of education and unless we can sort of bend the cost curve on health care. Those are very, very important things. They're just as important as getting people back to work. In fact, we can't keep people back to work. We can't keep the economy humming without a better way to educate our kids and without a better way to uh, provide health care. Well, we've, uh, we've delivered on our early promises for job creation and we put in place the longer term strategies uh, that we talked about during the campaign. We set a very, very positive tone here in the building with the legislature. The, the, there's been almost no partisanship uh, to this date. Uh, put together a balanced budget uh, that aligns our state resources with our state spending. Uh, and we've started the process of, uh, of elevating the issues around transformational change in education and in, in health care. So I um, feel pretty good about the first month in office. The most enjoyable part of the job to date has been getting out around uh, Oregon, not just here in Salem. We were over in eastern Oregon here a couple weeks ago, visited uh, uh, Hill Meat Company in, in Pendleton, had a great uh, public meeting with uh, local business and, and, uh, and civic and uh, governmental leaders. Went over to Ontario, uh, threw the switch on a big solar display at the National Guard facility over there and visited uh, Select Onion. So Oregonians are great, resilient people. We, uh, you know, we all know we've had some hard times, but people are optimistic and we're pulling ourselves out of this. It means that the education of a child, the process through which a child gets educated, starts at birth and continues right on through post-secondary education. And we need to recognize that a lot of children in our society are exposed to risk factors that interfere with their ability to learn when they get to kindergarten. So if you're going to talk about education, you really need to talk about those years before kids get to kindergarten to make sure that they're all ready to learn when they get there, that they're reading when they get out of the first grade, and they have a seamless transition out of high school into the workforce or into college. I think people need to understand that there's a direct relationship between the money available for schools and the strength of our economy. It is the private sector payroll, private sector economy that raises, that produces the tax revenues that allow us to fund important public services like schools. So, uh, you know, they're, they're not separate entities, they're related. By the same token, it's our educational system that produces the educated and skilled workforce that we need in the 21st century to continue to provide uh, a, a, a thriving private sector economy. Well, first of all, we all need to be optimistic. We all need to remember that we are Oregonians. We've faced tough times before. We're going to do it again, and uh, the world is going to get better when we get through this, uh, this difficult budget cycle. Secondly, they can get a hold of their legislators and let them know that this is not a time for business as usual, that we have to balance the budget with the resources we have, but we also have to do some major transformation with both uh, education and health care if we want a brighter future for our state. I want to thank all of you who have taken the time to, to contact me. I want you to keep sending me your ideas. You know, this is something we're going to have to do together, and we're going to have to do it right. And, if, and with your help, I'm confident that's exactly what's going to happen.